Welcome to Scorched Earth and a general reading for the sign of Aquarius. Sun, Moon or Ascendant for the month of November 2023. I hope you are well. I'm using the Crow Tarot for you today. Um, before we begin, if the reading resonates and you'd like to go a little bit deeper, there will be an extended that you can access at the end. That is link number one in the description box. Link number two is to my private community, the Order of the Phoenix, which is situated over on the Circle platform. You can get access to all of the extended content for no extra cost and you can also hang out with an extraordinary group of people so if that sounds like that's your bag you know what to do with that link i've just noticed that the king of swords is at the bottom of the deck here which is uh, kind of cool let's shuffle him back in and uh, see what's going on with you can i have three cards for various please there we go beautiful we have the star as the very first card in your recent past that is of course the card of aquarius i have current energy please for aquarius goodness me we have the page of cups and finally what is coming towards aquarius for november please oh thank you four of swords that's rather pleasant we like that we've got the two of so uh, no we don't we have the two of pentacles at the bottom of the deck which is a card that i most often associate with um hmm, coping um and we'll notice here in this particular one we've got we don't have the emotional maelstrom in the background which is interesting um, that we would usually usually associate with this card right and so it comes to mean coping for me because you know there's all of this emotional shit going on in the background and then at the front there's us in this rather performative state going we're coping we're coping everything's fine this feels slightly different because this does feel like you're coping it doesn't feel like it's performative um, but the winds are buffeting you around and i think that this is important because it suggests that the energy of November could be rather tumultuous for you. But the point of the situation is to find your peace, find your centre within that tumultuous energy, right? And I like it because it suggests that the tumult isn't within you, it's outside of you. And the more you can lean into uh, your own sense of personal peace, the more able you are to weather this storm, if I can put it that way. So we start off with the star card over here and I need to pull some clarifiers before I get too excited with myself. So let's go with the triple goddess and uh, put some meat on the bones of this. I should warn you ahead of time, all of the signs seem like they're getting a bit of a minor bollock in this month. In, a, in the most loving way, obviously. Um, but nobody seems to be getting through November without having to lean into what is traditionally quite difficult for them as a sign. And so, yeah, heads up, there's probably going to be a little bit of that. So let's have a look at the star. Why is the star card here? Six of Pentacles, that's also a card that's been coming up quite a bit for everyone. Um, oh, goodness, and we have the tower. And we have here the star again, wonderful. And that page of cups. We've got the Empress and we've got the Five of Swords. Could be issues with mothers, but we'll get to that. Tell me about the uh, Four of Swords, please, for Aquarius. We have the Queen of Cups. And we have the Ten of Pentacles with, interestingly, the High Priestess at the bottom of the deck there for you. Now, I like this because it's it's uh, everything about this reading is actually speaking to uh, peace and peaceful ways of doing things. I would actually go as far as to say that the, the way forward for you this month is that of the Peaceful Warrior. I would not be going out of your way to um, either instigate nor perpetuate arguments it's a month to let a lot of things go and that's not to say let a lot of things slide or put up with things that you shouldn't but more pick your battles and know that half of them aren't actually really worth fighting in the first but at least half of them 
Um, what's more important this month is your inner sanctum. I'm pausing there because that feels very, very important and so important that I'm actually going to write it down before I proceed because I can't tell you the number of internal tuning forks that are going off internally for me having just said that phrase. So that's probably what this reading is going to be called. So I'll just chuck that down there. Um, <clears throat> yes, definitely pick your battles. And even in battle, I would be concentrating more on what feels peaceful to you. Because I've been talking for months about this wall of uncertainty that I feel that we're all, you know, feeling. And even when I mention this, I'm always looking up to this is bizarre, always looking up to the left because it always feels like it's just hanging here. It's been approaching for quite a long time, but now it seems to have just stuck. Like there's some sort of glitch in the matrix and it's here and we're all going, oh God, I don't want to know what it's going to feel like when this tsunami hits. And I kind of almost wish that it would because then there would be a crisis that I could deal with. I would at least understand the nature of the crisis and I could formulate some sort of response to it so that I can cope with it. And in that sense, the crisis would would behave somewhat like a release of tension, right? There's a, a way that we could focus our attention on something specific. We get our priorities in order pretty fucking quickly and then we could deal with the thing. And the interesting thing about this is that I'm just not sure how soon this tsunami is going to break over us because the uncertainty seems stretching out in per perpetuity at the moment. And these, the release of tension that we would normally associate with, you know, oh, you get an escalation, an escalation, you get a rise in, in that, in that sense of pressure somewhere there ends up being a release valve right and we can release some of it and some of that we can do actively and mindfully we can you know exercise if you're a fire sign then you tend to exercise until you make yourself throw up because that puts you in your body and you actually feel like you're in control of things you know for pisces sometimes i'm informed by my daughter it's just having a little cry that's a that's a daily release there uh, none of the traditional forms of releasing tension seem to be working quite as well as they have done in the past and certainly with things that are going out uh, going on out in the world you just look outside your window and see what's going on right there there is that escalation that's going on and nowhere does it seem to be abating now your focus this month is internal almost every sign that i have read for no every sign that i have read or has had that same message whatever is going on outside of you, to anchor yourself to the possibility that release will come via that mechanism is a mistake. It's all internal work this month. And it's Scorpio season. So maybe that's not that much of a surprise, right? But I would avoid being warlike about anything. And I would be very, very careful not to respond to bait or to anyone or anything that seems to be trying to agitate some sort of response out of you. This whole month is about finding your centre and refusing to fucking move from there. Now, that's quite interesting. And we'll probably get to why that is quite interesting. You know, if anything, you need to be the embodiment of this energy right here calm peaceful <coughs> excuse me as i am recording this um it's in october because obviously we need to get them out in time for you to see them in november but this the the lunar eclipse has not happened yet that will affect all of the fixed signs most profoundly although it will have effects for everybody else as well and so as a fixed sign Aquarius, you must expect that this is going to have some sort of effect on you and whether it's positive or negative and, and I'm inclined to think it's going to be resoundingly positive for everyone, although it may not feel like that in the moment. 
Um, finding a way that you can create an inner sanctum that looks like this rather than doing what is kind of the default for air and fire signs and expressing outwards so that it would look more like this is the key to your success this month. So we start off with the star card and as I said that is your energy and there are lots of lots of meanings for the star card. We can talk about healing, we can talk about purification, we can talk about um, goals, hopes, dreams, aspirations and all of these are absolutely part of your experience or they have been part of your experience in the time leading up to where you are right now. Um, when I say recent past we could literally be talking about this morning, it could be just when you got out of bed, you know, how you felt then. Anything up to about six weeks back from here, right? But the experience that you've been having at this time is incorporating all of these different factors, right? A, a sense of healing, a sense of purification, a sense of um, connection. Perhaps you have opened up to the possibility of connection of all sorts. It doesn't have to be romantic or sexual or any of those kind of things, right? There's just a sense of something that's kind of just cracked open a little bit here for, for Aquarius. Um, and it could be that you are now thinking about your future in a more direct way, um, in a more meaningful way than you have done up until this point. But the thing that feels to me is being sung out most resoundingly, and it's because the star card is here twice, is that for the first time in a very long time, you feel much more like yourself than you have done. And that's because there is access to bits of you that you have walled off up until this point, right? Detachment is very real with Aquarius, but it is also a coping mechanism in a lot of ways, sometimes. When a sign shows up in their own reading, it is a sign of authenticity. And one cannot be authentic unless we are bringing in all the bits of us, including the bits that we have chosen to disavow at points in the past. I'm talking obviously about your shadow and all that sort of stuff here, right? But what I really like about this is this succession of cards that we have here. Because we start off with the Six of Pentacles. And the Six of Pentacles is an awareness that some sort of balance has to be brought to bear. What did I call your reading last month? It was something like uh, crack the eggs, make the omelette, right? There, were, there was something that needed to be done and there was going to be some degree of collateral damage. But in order for you to achieve the thing that you actually wanted to do, you had to accept that there was going to be a change of state. There was going to have to be a bit of discomfort and you were going to have to maybe put people's noses out somewhere in order for you to do the thing that you are trying to do. And in doing that, it's about bringing the balance to the situation, right? Reclaiming your autonomy. But also, you know, um, putting yourself in alignment with where a future you wants to be. And that's incredibly important. It's a very grounded energy too, just as an aside, the Six of Pentacles, I think. But then we have the Tower and we have the Star. Break the eggs, make the omelette, right? For sure. But the Star follows on chronologically from the Tower. The Tower is about destruction. It is about the pulling things down. It is a re-diversion, a re-diversion, a diversion or a redirection from a path that we've been on to a path that we are going towards, what the star represents to us. So this is card number 16. This is card number 17. Destruction and the return of hope. That's what those two things say to me. So it could well be that you've had some sort of crisis or there was a fear that whatever it is that you were going to have to do in breaking the eggs would lead to a crisis. But what it's done is put you in your body in a way that you have not felt like in a very long time. And this is... This alignment with authenticity can become really fucking addictive in the best possible way. Oh, addictive has some kind of pejorative overtones. But when you do something and it feels good, when it feels like you're coming back to yourself, when it feels like the future is starting to open up a little bit, the thought of, you know, showing up in a fraudulent way. Again, another word that has 
enormous pejorative overtones to it. But I think that's effectively what we're doing when we're trying to tiptoe our way through life, not upset the apple cart too much, um, and do essentially what is expected from us by everybody else. Um, there is something inauthentic about that. There is something inherently fraudulent about that. You have one life, live it, and all that sort of thing. And most people spend their life trundling along, doing anything but. They don't pursue their passions. They don't say the thing that they actually feel. They accommodate and they acquiesce and they feel the pressures of societal expectations or family expectations and all these sorts of things. And generally speaking, what is good for the collective is not good for the individual. And we are taught from a very young age that in order to uh, be successful in any sort of way, we have to follow a prescribed number of steps and we have to do things in a particular order. And any deviation away from that is going to make us less than. It, it raises the possibility of being rejected. Now, as a sign, generally speaking, Aquarius and Sagittarius are less susceptible to this kind of energy because there is a there's a desire to go your own way. Right? It, it manifests slightly differently. With Sagittarius, it's always about them in the moment, what they want to do, often about the pursuit of hedonism, right, in its lower vibration. With Aquarius, it's the desire to do anything but what everybody else is doing, right? It's it's the, the need to stand out in the same way that, that Leo needs to stand out. But Leo does it by standing in the middle of the group. This was a way that it was put by Tarot by Bronx. I saw a post that she'd done on Instagram a few months ago and it was spot on. But Aquarius draws the same level of attention to themselves by refusing to participate in the group. No, I don't like that. You're all doing that. It's boring. It's orthodox. I'm going to go do something else. And I think that we've spoken at points over the last few months about, um, well, fuck me. This is a this is a theme that actually has been coming up for all of the signs, <clears throat> which is that the extremes are not the place to hang out. You know, we have one way of doing things that tends to be the default. And then in order to grow and learn and all that sort of thing, we start exploring the other side of the extremes. So for you, as I was talking about, you know, um, I feel over the last few months, we've talked about the times when it is right to stand with people, right? Regardless of the fact that, that you know, what they might be doing is kind of orthodox and, and been done before and all that kind of thing. We're not reinventing the wheel for reinventing the wheel's sake. And sometimes it is right to be there. For Leo, it is the idea that... What is it for Leo? Which has gone completely fucking... For Leo, it's okay for you to stand away stand apart from the crowd that doing your own thing is the most important thing right but nowhere is it written that the the extreme of something you know the other end of where we feel comfortable is where we are supposed to remain because the lesson in the pendulum swing here is that there is a center point for us that represents our authority and we get there by way of discernment so not rejecting everything for rejecting its sake, not embracing everything for embracing everything's sake, but looking at the situation in front of you and going, what is the right thing for me right now? What do I need to do? And by extension, then how does everybody else benefit when I'm showing up as I should be? Mm, I don't like that word, should. I try and avoid using the word should. The way that I can show up as I was designed to or that fully encapsulates all of the wisdom that I have accrued through my experiences over life. And be thoroughly, unapologetically, authentically you. The discernment is the key because in every situation we need to decide whether we need to go a little bit that way or a little bit that way. And what we need to do is wash ourselves clean of our previous ways of doing things. Whether it's at one extreme 
or the other, because it's only really in the centre that we find ourselves. There's some big ass fucking themes here, Aquarius, that are coming through for you here. And is it really that much of a surprise? I mean, we, we're going at a considerable pace, although it's very, very slow. Pluto is moving now. Instead of retrograding in Capricorn, it's stationed direct and it's, it's now moving forwards. It is slow. But this is going to happen. This ingress is going to happen in... January, I think it's like the third week in January or something like that. And we're going to get another taste, as we have done earlier this year, another taste of what it is for Pluto to be in Aquarius rather than Capricorn. Now, whilst that might be quite exciting for some people and fucking terrifying for others, the situation that we have then, the, 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 the thing that's happening in the middle, is that Pluto is grinding up and down those last couple of degrees of Capricorn. It is breaking down old systems, old ways of doing things, old structures, and having us get ready to embrace something that is completely new, completely innovative. And for, for most of us, that is being unapologetically, authentically ourselves. There aren't many of us who, well, there aren't many humans that ever manage to achieve that and yet we are all being called to lean into what is uncomfortable so that we can embrace that and allow to to break down you know tower like anything that is stopping us from reaching that now when we get into your current energy we've got the page of cups now that is not a card that generally one would associate anywhere near an aquarius and yet here it is and i feel like it's representative of a certain set of um, experiences that are now subtly starting to change the way that you perceive reality. They're changing, it's changing the way that you perceive yourself because there is an emotional component to you. And I think it's been very comfortable for you to push that to the side, as we see in the King of Swords, right? When he's making a decision about something, pushes his emotions to the side and considers stuff purely on the facts. But there is no element that works better than any of the others. You know, it's not like me as a Leo goes, oh God, I wish I had more more air in my chart. I've got quite a bit of air in my chart anyway, right? I don't know. <clears throat> I'm so sick of all of this fire. My life would be better if there was no fire in it, right? We're always talking about these themes of balance. And so we have to balance the air against the water, against the fire, against the earth. And ultimately, you know, that all contributes together to create the spirit or works in tandem with the spirit, at least. The introduction, the slow, tentative introduction of the element of water into who you are as an authentic Aquarian being, I think is really, really significant. And I don't think it's that you're all rattling around being emotional messes now. I think it's been a simple acknowledgement that there are emotions and that they haven't really had much of an airing. Now, in tackling whatever situation this was in your recent past, the thing that you feared, but I think has actually turned out to be extraordinarily good for you, because it's making you feel like more like who you are than you ever have done before, it's allowing this quiet, peaceful ingress of emotions, and it's also allowing you to look at them in a way that you haven't done before. It does represent, Page of Cups, it does represent forgiveness, compassion, empathy, but it also represents the idea that, that you get to have emotions and but they don't have to be messy. I've used that phrase a lot with you Aquarius over the years to describe how you perceive emotions, that they're messy and illogical and, and disordered and that they hurt quite often. You've not been 
flooded with them. You've not been overwhelmed by them. You're standing at the shore of the ocean and contemplating what the water means to you, what you will allow the water to mean to you. And for some of you, that has brought up issues around your mother, because the Empress is the archetypal mother, right? She's lots of other things besides. She represents Taurus, she represents Libra, um, and that's because she's ruled by Venus, right? And both of those signs are ruled by Venus. So we could be talking about the awareness of the fact that your mother's influence or the influence of a mother wound has caused you to engage in a set of behaviours that have been somewhat self-sabotaging over the years, right? This could speak to a more active conflict that you have been in with your mother. Where one of you has always been called to, to give ground to the other. Because it feels like an imbalance of power here in some way, like someone's got all the swords and these people have put them down, you know, looking pretty fucking sorrowful. They haven't walked away, though. Now, they're standing where they are. The wind's blowing, but they're standing where they are. And it's almost like in a constant state of awareness of the imbalance of the situation. Now, a mother wound will absolutely leave you feeling pretty unbalanced, but... What's important here is the recognition that this is something that has been operating within you. Now, for those of you who, for whom an issue of, of motherhood wounding, you know, sense of abandonment or rejection or any of those kind of things, or even just, you know, a sensitivity to the imbalance of power between the two of you, um, for those for whom the Empress does not represent that. The Empress represents gratitude and abundance, fertility, you know, the creation of new things, wonderful things happening. Venusian things, right? Um, uh, money, luxury, uh, comfort, all of these kind of energies. And the way that, for some reason, something about you, Aquarius, and something about your internal workings has prevented you from allowing those to come into your life, to form part of your life. You know, maybe you've decided that things, you know, like life's hard. It's just what it is. Life is hard and you have to just fucking get on with it. And you don't worry about things too much. You're concerned about things that feel emotional. You put those in a box, you lock them away. We don't need to think about those because we're moving forwards ever towards the star on the horizon, right? Well, what you might have come to realise is that in that process, all that's really happened is life has become drudgery. You make the best of it as you can, but there are a few things that seem to have come along that have really lit you up in any kind of emotionally meaningful sense. No, I think about this in terms of cognitive loops because you know, any card numbered five is an instability and then we've got swords so it's an instability of thought or an instability of logic or an instability of rationality and reason sometimes an, inability, uh, an instability in actually communication you might have completely different communication styles to other people and that can often lead to issues and more often than not will lead you to close your mouth rather than try and you know, make yourself understood by someone because you just kind of run out of steam. <coughs> There's no point in trying to explain yourself to someone if, if, if the person that you're speaking to is either A, committed to misunderstanding you, or B, has such a different communication style that it's difficult to find somewhere to gel in the middle, you know? But where you are sitting right now feels like it's aware so very, very aware now of all of these issues. 
And I think rather than flogging yourself, rather than making yourself feel more and more tense, what you are doing is actively, mindfully stepping that shit down. You're taking charge of what's going on inside of you, whether that's mental, emotional, or whatever. And it seems like the world is starting to take on a different hue. There are a lot of very colourful cards here on the table. And I can't help but feel like a lot of this is because the colour is starting to return to your life, where it's been perhaps a little monochromatic for a while, or certainly in shades of grey. The colour is returning. The hope is returning. The, the ability to be able to turn towards the future and say, I have big dreams and these things are going to happen. It started small. Was it small? It probably felt pretty fucking big to you, right? But you've done it. You got over that hump. Holy shit, that wasn't quite as bad as I thought it was going to be. I can do this again, but I can maybe do it on a bigger scale. There's a feeling of, kind, of a kind of weird contentment about you at the moment, Aquarius, which is really interesting. And I know I said at the beginning that, I, that, that you should resist the desire to be warlike. I actually don't think that there's much impetus within you to be warlike at the moment. And it could be that you're seeing people's flaws. But rather than judging them, you're kind of understanding them. Right? There's a there's a kind of compassion and empathy that's coming through. And you're like, yeah, well, of course they're going to feel like that. I get it. I understand. It's not going to shake me off where I am, but I get it. And so the message for November is to intensify that feeling. We've got the Four of Swords, and I like this because it's actually stepping back from the Five. If you have found yourself in active conflict with, for example, your mother or some sort of authoritative female figure in your life, I think that there's an understanding that a lot of what is going on here isn't actually about you, which is interesting, and that could be quite jarring for somebody that's got a mother wound. But it seems to be helping you to contextualise things rather than muddying the waters. So from the five, we're kind of stepping back into the four. But it doesn't feel like a retreat. It feels like a desire to... value peace, one's own internal peace, more than winning whatever situation is going on, whatever argument is going on, right? The desperate need to be not just, maybe it's not even right, but heard, is stepping back. You're taking a break from that. And then as there's an understanding that what, like, whatever's going on in you, whilst it's necessary to pay attention to whatever might be influencing it, that actually your core power sits within you making sense of it yourself, you choosing to heal yourself, you choosing to pay attention to your internal places and not look outside of you for reasons why things might be hard. In anything more than a fact-finding exercise, yes, okay, so my mother or some sort of, you know, female authority figure, someone that I, you know, that, that, that is uh, possibly charged with caring for me in some sort of way, right? We've got a mother archetype coming through really strong there. That actually they're not perfect, and actually they've got flaws, and actually they've got shitloads of their own work to do, and that's okay, and I can see how a lot of the stuff that they do is, is just a projection onto me. So if I choose not to take that on board, it actually clears the space for me to do the work on my own. Right? The work that I have to do, the work that is my responsibility. It also means I'm probably going to take things a little less uh, personally than I have done before. You know, there's an aggressive footing here. This is an Aquarius card right here, right? Forget what it is. Something in Aquarius, right? 
but it's an Aquarius card. It represents what is fixed and rigid and, uh, and immovable. But we come to the Four of uh, Swords, and that's, that's a Libra card. And we've got that notion of balance coming in again. And Libra is important because we've got, you know, the South Node is moving through Libra at the moment. Which means the North Node is in Aries. And so what, what the lesson of the next 18 months is, or well, it's actually probably closer to a year now because we've been in there for a while, is the distinction between the I am and the we are. And the understanding that it's really important not to throw the baby out with the bathwater. In some ways, it is necessary for you to assert yourself, or I get very clear about the I am. But also to perceive the value of the we are. And perhaps change the nature of how that is showing up in your life. Now, in order for you to do that, like you're doing the I am work. But there's value in the we are too. Because there's the Ten of Pentacles. Now, the Ten of Pentacles can talk to business, it can talk to your home, it can talk about all sorts of flat pentacle interpretations, you know, so money and wealth and all that kind of thing. But it's one of those cards that's also called the Happy Family card. It represents where you've come from and where you're going, right? Heritage and legacy. It's a snapshot in time that shows you, you know, the, 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 the combination of the two where they meet in the middle. It also talks about discipline and hard work and the things that you invest. And that isn't just your money, that's your time and your care and your effort and your money and your love. And maybe something about your family situation, your work situation, your community, your friend situation needs overhauling so that it can stand the test of time. And what's necessary for any sort of Ten of Pentacles or Ten of Cups sort of situation to truly exist. The key to that is in the card before it. It's the Nine of Cups and the Nine of Pentacles, which for me speak about you as an individual, what you take responsibility for in terms of your emotions, in terms of your resources, all of your resources, and how you come together with other people who are also doing that same management of emotional resources, physical resources, energetic resources, and you come together to create something that is stronger, more stable, more secure, more able to have a lasting legacy that is positive than anything that you could produce on your own. And we've got the Queen of Cups there which is about acceptance. Queen of Cups is peaceful. The Queen of Cups is empathetic. She's compassionate. She sees all the side, or she sees all the different sides of everything. But she looks for what unites rather than divides. Because at her core, she is talking about love. Ew, love, ew, right? I've got an Aquarius South node. I feel you. <clears throat> But because you cracked open the door to emotion, to compassion, to empathy, to you allowing yourself to feel these things, and then spending the time in finding the place for these things to sit within you, you're never gonna be a fucking water sign Aquarius. It's just not gonna happen. <coughs> but you do bear the water. The water is implied in Aquarius. So overtly stated here. But as the water bearer, there's a water association there. Even if you are not absolutely, you know, swimming in it, you're carrying it. That's the Aquarian expression of the emotion. You're going to carry it along. I don't think I need to exhort you to pick your battles this month because I think that's what you're doing. I don't think I need to tell you not to be warlike because I don't think you have any intention of doing it. But what I will tell you, which I hope is confirmation for how you're actually feeling at the moment, is that 
there's a kind of internal security and stability that is now accessible to you because it's taking in all of the elements in the right proportions. You'll notice that there's actually no wands cards on here talking about all the elements and whatever. <coughs> it's not about external action this month for you at all. It's a deeply internal month where you work out how things feel to you and you start the act of creating an internal sanctum for you, for yourself, that is characterised by peace and nothing else. So whatever, f you know, pops up that feels spiky, we want to make sure that we're not expressing that externally so that it adds to the agitation of this card here. It's all about this. The tensions are increasing outside. And this might be in all sorts of things. I mean, you might have family members, members agitating, trying to get some sort of response for you. And your lack of response this month is what is going to instigate, engender within these other people a period of awareness when they're not getting what they were looking for and then they start wondering why it was that they were looking for it in the first place and then what does that mean about them? You know, there's something here that is a catalyst for other people to do their work. If you stay quiet, and again, it's not staying quiet so that you allow injustices to pass by or anything like that. It's staying quiet until you work out exactly what you think about something and more importantly, what you feel about something and how those two things coalesce together, how they exist peacefully together. It is not a month for throwaway comments or anything like that. I think anything that comes out of your mouth this month is going to be pretty deep and pretty intense. But what it's going to reveal is this new found inner peace that is more valuable to you than anything else that could be going on at the moment. And it's providing a new lens for you to view everything through. This is really interesting, Aquarius. This feels like it's a really powerful month for you. I've actually said that to every single sign that I've read for now. But it is. There's something here, and maybe it's because, you know, maybe it's Scorpio season that's doing this, is having everybody dig really fucking deep. But there's a transformative energy that seems to be being proffered, and I can't really think off the top of my head other than the eclipses what it could be that is pushing people to this i mean the eclipse is in scorpio the lunar eclipse is in scorpio so maybe that is it but everybody is shifting on an internal level and refusing to disempower themselves anymore that can only benefit everyone collectively if everybody's doing their work in their own respective ways. What happens when you all come back together is that things are stronger, more stable. More truthful, perhaps, too. All right, I'm gonna leave it there, Aquarius. I'm gonna go over and do the extended now, so if you'd like to join me, you can do that on Vimeo, you can do that on Circle, um, <clears throat> whichever is right for you is uh, cool. If you are not going to join me over there, then the takeaway from this is that little nugget of peace that feels so important to you now is more important than you could possibly imagine and you need to really focus on that. Expanding that, increasing that, maintaining that making it truly part of who you are. 
because it's a very important tool in your arsenal moving forwards. So there you go. Right. Know that I love you all very, very much. And I'll see you soon.